What's the word, y'all? NBA trade deadline is over. As of right now, the way your team looks, it's probably how it's going to look for the rest of the season. I mean, we do got some buyout candidates and stuff. But for the most part, the team you got is the team you got. And for some people, you're extremely excited. And for others, not so, not, not so much. And we're here to talk all things trade deadline. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for the support over the last three to four days from the Kyrie Irving requesting a trade to his actual trade to the Kevin Durant video to the Lakers trade. You guys have been killing it. It got to a point yesterday where we were number eight on trending, not trending gaming, but on the entire platform of YouTube. The first time we've been that high, number eight, and that was with the Kevin Durant video. And then if you scroll down further at 14, it was us again with the Lakers video. So again, thank you so much. I've been trying my hardest to cover the trade deadline as much as possible and efficiently, efficiently as possible we even did the twitch stream we had 12,000 concurrent viewers so i just want to say thank y'all so much for the support and i'm just excited to continue this journey um because it seems like every single year we break new records so thank you for that we got trades on top of trades on top of trades the easiest thing for me to do is say hey here are the winners and here are the losers but i think there's there's more nuanced than that for this trade deadline and i hope y'all didn't take it for granted man because this was the best trade deadline we've had and a long time, maybe even ever, a guy like Kevin Durant doesn't get traded at the deadline. He, he basically never gets traded in general, but he definitely don't get traded at the deadline. And he definitely don't surprisingly get traded at the deadline. So don't take it for granted. I dropped a video on this channel about a month ago where I was subverting the expectations and saying that this trade deadline, or I, I, I'm expecting the trade deadline to be buns. So anything that happened that was good, we'll take. And in that video, I was like, oh man, we might have a year where OG Ananobi is the best name moved. He went not even moved. We got Kevin, we got Kyrie, we got others. So, again, there's so much to talk about. I might not focus on the super big deals like the Kevin Durant one because we did drop our solo video. We might talk about it here or there, um, but we, we already dropped that one. And you know what? I'm becoming more of a fan of the Kevin Durant trade from the Brooklyn Nets perspective over the last 24 hours. I think I was just so enamored by the, the fact that Kevin Durant was traded that it felt like no matter what they got a return, it was going to feel like a lackluster package because he's goddamn Kevin Durant, arguably a top 10 player of all time. He ain't no he ain't no later than 15 of all time, and he's still amazing. And, and you know, I saw the package of all the first round picks. I saw Mikel Bridges and all of that, and I was like, ah, oh, it feels like an underpay. And the more I look at it, the more I like it considering the circumstances from the Brooklyn Nets where, where they basically gave them they gave him their word that if things went south during the season they'd get him out of there and get him to his, his team and of course his team during the offseason was the Phoenix Suns and this is a really good package especially when you consider that they they're serious about staying competitive this season you just saw them first game outside of the trade without Mikhail Bridges and, J, and uh, Cam Johnson and these guys suiting up they beat up on the Bulls the defense is going to be pretty good and they they you know have a couple spots between them and the plan or them being completely out and they don't have any incentive to be bad because they don't own the rights of their own first round pick um and there was a report that came out from zach lowe that a team offered an additional four first round picks to get mikhail bridges services that they turned down because they really wanted to stand pat with this current core at least for the foreseeable future i'm sure and people are like oh why the hell would they they've this declined four first round picks they could have walked out with what nine first round picks in a kevin Durant trade but I do believe that the way Mikael Bridges is and how important he could be for a championship level team, that same off will probably be there next season during the offseason. Or if it's not four first round picks or whatever I just said, maybe it's two and a player or something like that. So there is no big rush to flip Mikael Bridges immediately as it was for Jay Crowder, who's 30 plus years old and wants to go play for a competitive team. Um, I'm excited to watch the Brooklyn Nets, but not as excited as I am to watch the Phoenix Suns, man, because they're going to be pretty good. Uh, enough said they're going to be pretty good and as long as they can stay healthy and that was one of the big things in my video that the health is the big issue because if Chris Paul pulls his hamstring for the 12th year in a row in the playoffs or Devin Booker get hit in the face or somebody dives into the legs of Kevin Durant and those players miss time come playoff time they're going to be it, it's going to be rough because they I, I think that they're we talked about the lack of depth that they have and it's not the best depth in basketball but I also don't think it's the worth worst but they also won't be able to mimic anything close to the production of those three players if somebody goes down so um if they can stay healthy this team on the hierarchy of basketball teams and a hierarchy of the western conference they jumped up back to it and, and they went from a team that 
I had as a as a, a championship level team last year. They got humiliated by Luka Doncic and the Dallas Mavericks, and and the world thought, me included, that the the window was closed for them. And now acquiring Kevin on contract for four seasons, we don't know exactly how this is gonna go, but he's under contract for such a long time that this window is back open, and I think it's open wide for the next two seasons this playoff run the next playoff run because after that chris paul is like 40 years old and we don't know what the hell is gonna happen with chris paul's health considering it's already starting to go down so um i said i wasn't gonna talk about the kd trade and we just spent 12 minutes on it whatever let's get to the next one i already dropped the d'angelo russell one i don't even have any additional feelings about that um other than i'm i realized um something i overlooked from the Minnesota Timberwolves perspective when I did my initial reaction to the trade and it had to do with like the salary and the money saving possibilities of trading D'Angelo Russell and getting back Mike Conley um that's not my expertise to cap and all of that stuff so I'll give them a thumbs up for that I guess it's something that's outside of my expertise um but but we'll see I mean it was rumored that D'Angelo Russell and the Lakers are interested in an extension which is for me it is weird to see a team immediately trade for a player and start talking extension without seeing how he would pair alongside guys like LeBron James and Anthony Davis did the same thing with Rui Hachimura after they traded for him. Who who knows if they're gonna come to an agreement? But it, it it is a bit weird. It's also weird to see like Malik Beasley and Jared Vanderbilt sitting courtside or M Mikhail Bridges sitting courtside, um, watching his new team perform while they wait for physicals and all of that stuff. Um, uh, so them, them already being there is funny to me. Uh, so for reference, I'm looking at a Bleach Report article that shows me all the trades. The next one is Jay Crowder ending up in Milwaukee. In this one, the Brooklyn Nets got three second round picks. The Indiana Pacers get George Hill back, ladies and gentlemen. George Hill is back. Remember him, Lance Stevenson, and Roy Hibbert and stuff. They were on cover of that magazine with the fashion and all of that. Um, do you remember that era of Pacers basketball? You probably do. Sergi Bach is going back, and it's already known that he's probably going to get bought out. Jordan Warren and two second round picks are going to Indiana, and the, the Milwaukee Bucks get their guy in Jay Crowder. Um, they gave up five second round picks. That was the big thing in the trade deadline this season. If you was trading for a player and you didn't have a first, he go four. He go four seconds. He go he go five seconds. It was just all over the place. Four to five seconds everywhere. And that's the case here with Jay Crowder. Um, we'll see. Again, we haven't seen Jay Crowder play basketball in quite some time. He seems ecstatic on Twitter to be back in the swing of things. I don't know if he'll immediately pass his physical and start hooping next week, or will it have a ramp up period where he's back after the deadline? Regardless, they just played against the Lakers as I'm recording this video. And um, and then in, the, in this one, Chris Middleton had one of his better games and looked closer to himself than any time. So uh, the Milwaukee Bucks are ramping up, and I wouldn't be surprised if they're a buyout a buyout team. But Brooklyn uh, turns Jay Crowder to three second round picks, and you can commend that because again they don't have much draft capital outside of what they're acquiring today the lakers made another deal to get mo bamba on the team um mo bamba for patrick beverly who will be likely bought out in a second round pick i honestly thought that was a, a, a really undervalued deal um when it comes to mo bamba I, I mean i guess he's not struggling to get playing time but this time of the season guys like mo wagner are getting minutes over him and of course he's a former fifth overall pick who just signed another contract so maybe i was overvaluing him as a dude that if you've been around this channel for years you know coming out of the draft mo bamba was one of my dudes i went when he got drafted the bulls at the seventh pick that year i was like damn i just needed mo bamba to fall into our laps i think we i think that was the year of wendell carter um, so they ended up playing together eventually, but uh, I was a big Mo Bamba guy, so maybe I still am to this day. Apparently, he got he got hands or something. He's he's ending up in Los Angeles for that price, and considering they had to trade away TB because Thomas Bryant requested a trade, this is a good replacement. Um, not as great as the idea of Mo Bamba. Like the idea of Mo Bamba was stretch five, can block some shots, and, and this year I think he's shooting close to forty percent from three on like two attempts, so he still provides that stretch ability. But it does have a lot. There's a lot to be said about him because i mean again he's playing for orlando magic or a rebuilding team and he was losing minutes to mo wagner but for the lakers at this price that was patrick beverly who had been sneaky decent for the past month and a half or so um in a second round pick a, a, a worth deal because they have so many ball handlers now with some of the additional trades and they needed more center depth and mo Bamba can can do that this the surprising one sadiq bay ends up with the atlanta hawks so the atlanta hawks get some wing depth um they kept john collins for the goddamn sixth year in a row John Collins has found a way to just stay in Atlanta, um, but I, from from what I read, the Suns and the the Atlanta Hawks were very close on the deal, and then Matt Ishbia, who is the new owner of the Suns, said, "Forget that, we want Kevin, so let's go after Kevin." So there's a world where John Collins was moved yesterday, 
but it ended up being um, Sadiq Bey coming into the team. The, the Warriors washed their hands of James Wiseman, basically trading him away to get back Gary Payton a second. And then the Trailblazers end up with Kevin Knox and five second round picks. Again, five second round picks. And it said, no, these were functionally two separate trades and they were looping them together. So that, shout out to BR for making it easy for consumption for me to talk about. And I think I read this um, after this trade that Dwayne Casey didn't plan on starting James Wiseman. It's, it's, it is a bit weird. And, and the reason I'm saying it's weird, not because they took a flyer on James Wise, because I think it's a worth worthwhile flyer for what you gave up. 100% a worthwhile flyer for what you gave up. Because um, Sadiq Bey, he had been in rumors all season. Was he upset? Well, whatever. We don't really know. But if you're telling yourself that Sadiq Bey was not a part of your core plan, getting a guy like James Wiseman on a flyer is, is interesting. You did it with Marvin Bagley. You ended up giving him another contract at least. But ultimately, I don't think Marvin Bagley is a part of the full-time plan. But the reason it's interesting slash weird or different is because you already got Jalen Duran. You already have Isaiah Stewart. And I read that Dwayne Casey and company plan on starting James Wiseman. So you, you have Stu. You have Dur Duran. Now you have Wiseman. And you want the first overall pick, right? So potentially Vic, like you're shooting for Vic. Those are four centers. Now, obviously, if Vic comes to town, all three of those dudes can go to the next team because you're going to prioritize Vic. But like it's would it be difficult to develop all of these dudes because they all genuinely play the, the same position? I know Isaiah Stewart's played a lot of four this season. He's stretching the floor more. But, you know, again, for the for what you paid, not too terribly. But it is interesting to see, like, who's going to be a part of the long-term goal. Gary Payton II is a guy that understands and knows the system. I was pretty confident that the that the Warriors are going to go out there and do something. Um, and I thought it might have been Alice Caruso, but the Bulls said they want two first-round picks. Uh, Gary Payton II is a very similar player. He doesn't shoot it as efficiently as Alice Caruso does. The value is about the same. Alice Caruso don't take no shots. Um, but Payton knows the system, of course, being the NBA champion with them last season. So, um, does... I, is this enough for Warriors fans? I haven't even been I haven't been in the loops with each individual fan base after the trades to figure out who's excited about their moves or, or who's not. Does this move the needle enough for the Warriors where like uh, a team that did make big moves, you feel like the Warriors are still because I think they were the betting favorite pre-trade deadline. I don't know if they still are. Does this move of adding Gary Payton back into the swing of things make the changes where they can stay? Or I, I don't really know. Um, I like it from the Atlanta Hawks perspective, ex especially considering another deal that they did earlier was like to cut salary. It was like the Justin Holiday deal. It's just super on brand for the Atlanta Hawks to try to save a lot of money. But they got a guy in Sadiq Bay that will become an um, uh, uh, immediate rotational piece for their team who can run some three, who can run some four. Um, but I thought... For sure, the Atlanta Hawks are going to do something else, and that was John Collins. Yaga Pertle ended up getting traded um, for Kim Birch, a first-round pick of 2024, top six protected, and then two seconds. And this was a confusing deal um, because we all thought that the Raptors are going to be not a blow-it-up team, but a team that at least was going to move a Gary Trent Jr., an OG Ananobi, a Fred Van Vliet. These were three of the hottest names on the market pre-trade that line and not a single one of them ended up getting moved but instead they bought in on Yaka Pertle bringing them back after they trade him away a part of the Kawhi Leonard deal obviously um and the idea is that not only are you trading for this is not a rental on the last year of his deal but the idea is to re-sign him and now he is the center and you don't have to force Pascal Siakam to be a center but now since you didn't trade OG or you didn't trade Pascal or you didn't trade Gary Trent Jr what what is the lineup now because you you traded for yaka because you want yak to hold down the paint you want yak to start who's cut is it gary payton going back to the bench and now you got og scotty and and pascal in the star lineup with freddie probably but it just felt like the, like with this being basically the only deal the toronto raptors did it was a letdown me as a as a neutral fan because they had some of the pieces that could have swung the deadline um and i, I think it might have hurt them a little bit that Kevin got traded um, because teams like them and the goddamn Bulls, who we will talk about at the end of the video, I'm going to get my rent off, best believe it, um, felt that since all of the talent, the superstar talents that got traded went from East to West, that we don't even need to sell no more because, well, the, we think that the Brooklyn Nets aren't going to be as good. And now that gives us an opportunity to keep our pieces and see what we got one more time. And we just need to go on a little win streak because because if, if anybody can do it, it's us. That is the mindset. Yaka's is a really good player, though. Um, Yaka's a really good player. I, I just don't know if he was worth the 2024 first round pick. And I think they gave up a first round pick to get that. He's young last season. So they're throwing around these picks for, for players. And, and I guess we'll see what come of it. And for the Spurs, you got a first round pick 
for Jacoperto, which is all they really asked for. Actually, I think they asked for two first round picks, but they got one and then two seconds, which is good. My least favorite deal of the day was Bones Highland getting traded to the Clippers. And it's not for the Clippers um, sake, because I think the Clippers did an amazing job in this one because it was Bones Highland for two second rounders. And, and uh, Nuggets fans, before you say anything, I understand that there were some ripples with him and coaching and they didn't absolutely love his shot selection and all that. I under, I completely, I completely understand that. The deadline for the Nuggets was time. Thomas Bryant, which is a huge upgrade from DeAndre Jordan. That's beautiful because Thomas Bryant is a really good basketball player. But it feels like they they were completely confident seeing the rest of what was going on around the league and thought, we still think that we can do it because we have continuity and because uh, uh, Jamal Murray continues to look better and better every single game. But they didn't make a deal to get better outside of the Thomas Bryant one. And, and maybe, and I'm, I'm guessing because this is the deal that they agreed on, that the value of Bones Highland was basically nothing. But based on what I saw, there were there were six or seven teams that feel like they were lined up for a possibility to get Bones. I don't think any of those teams has given you super rotational pieces, but a player in return when you're trying to go on a championship push, a playable player would have been good. But the deadline for them is just upgrading the backup center, which is dope. But let's be real, come playoff time, Jokic is going to play 38 to 40 minutes anyway. So T T B and Jokic is not gonna play minutes together. I mean, I, I don't think they're gonna play minutes together come playoff time. So you didn't do anything to improve your playoff rotation. There's rumors that they're gonna be out there on the buyer uh, buyout. So we'll see if they go get a Reggie Jackson, a John Wall, or one of the people that are available. Um, but out of all the people that that I feel like are losers per se, I, the, the the Nuggets have to be in the conversation. Maybe not losers because Thomas Bryan's a really really good backup, and for the next 26 games of the regular season, he's gonna be amazing for them. But again, come playoff time, he's not going to get a lot of burn. And, and, you know, shout out to Aaron Gordon tonight, though. He was ridiculous. But for the Clippers' perspective, I mean, for a guy like Bones Island, who has the he has the mold in the make of being a, a flamethrower, off-the-bench, spark plug type dude. And in a lot of cases, guys like that don't end up having big roles in a championship push. That's just not what, what they're there for necessarily. Um... But you could get an occasional, a rare, a, you know, 15-point game off the bench in a playoff series from one of these guys. Jamal Crawford has a decent amount of them in his career. And I'm not saying that Bones is what Jamal ended up being as a six-man product. But he has that type of mold, that type of mindset, the type of game to maybe eventually ends, ends up being there. But what is he in year two? Like, this is, this is a very, very young player. I just hate that they didn't get a rotational player back two second round picks for it it's, it's kind of nasty work josh richardson got traded to the new orleans pelicans and this was the only deal they made and you know what i'm okay with this you know i saw some people saying that they should have went out and swung for defenses and there were rumors that they did have an offer for ozzy ananobi that was a lot of picks because i think they have 12 first round picks in their in their uh briefcase and they can afford to throw three because they'll still have nine if my my math is is you know right um but there's a report that they were okay with not going all in on this season because, well, B.I., Zion, these are dudes that are unhealthy right now, but the, the core is young. We have a young core. We might have been a two season where you're completely healthy, but we see the landscape of the NBA right now. We don't need to be hyper aggressive and go out there and do some magnificent big time deal because who knows when the next star is going to want out. And we have 12 first round picks currently. Let's chill. Let these young guys hoop. I kind of like the fact that it only ended up being um, Josh Richardson and four, four, sec, four second round picks to take on Vontae Graham. And with this one, um, they're saving some money. Save money. You know, big big thing. And then four second round picks for taking on Vontae and getting um, rid of Josh Richardson is cool work for the Spurs. They did a lot of small things that ended up with a lot of draft capital, which you you know you appreciate from the Spurs because they they ain't never really been a team that's been doing a lot of the selling and stuff. So for the fact that they're doing it and it seems like they're doing it successfully is good. Mason Plumlee is a is a Clipper. They've been looking for backup center play. Ma Mason Plumlee is solid. At the end of the day, he's solid, especially if he's gonna be your backup. Now with the with the Hornets, he was trying to do some stuff that you don't want a guy like Mason Plumlee doing. But as a backup center. It's, it's Mason Plum is really good. Now, will he play again? And when, when you talk about these teams that are trying to compete like the Clippers, I try to look at it from the perspective of will these people be 
um, a viable come playoff time. Mason Plumlee might not get a ton of minutes in the playoffs. He might get 10 or so per game or something like that. But you needed some backup center minutes. They wanted to get more of a rangy, switchable center. They didn't end up getting that in this. But Mason Plumlee can play, make a little bit. He's going to gobble up some boards. Um, he's going to get dunked on occasionally. So just be prepared for that. Um, and it only costs you a second round pick in Reggie Jackson, who had fallen out of favor of Tyron Lue anyway. Clippers, keep going, bro. The, Clip the Clippers did, what, four trades? Three, four trades this, this uh, trade deadline? Danny Green and John Wall going to the Houston Rockets. Um, John Wall to be waived. And there's a rumors that Danny Green might get bought out as well. Um, the rights to a swap of Milwaukee Bucks, yada, yada, also going to the Rockets. So they got another first round pick in this one. And then Eric Gordon in three seconds are going to the Clippers. And then the Memphis Grizzlies get Luke Kennard. Um, so the Grizzlies go get a lethal, lethal shooter, which is something they need. They, they don't lack three-point shooting, but they could use more of that. But again, looking through the lens of a championship caliber team, a team trying to compete, Luke Kennard can't play a ton of minutes come playoff time, especially if you're paying him alongside John Morant in the backcourt. And majority of playoff series, whatever, the opposing guards are going to try to eat that. You know what I'm saying? Um, become regular season, having another guy on the wings that can just catch the ball and shoot the ball at a high clip, 40 to 45 percentage is dope. The Clippers get get Eric Gordon back. You know what I'm saying? Eric Gordon had been trying to get out of Houston for forever, and they get him. And, I mean, I don't even know what the, the, the Clippers depth chart look like nowadays. I feel like they trading a lot of stuff and getting stuff back. Um, but all of their trades so far, I'm a fan of. I just need to see it materialize because this is a team that we we haven't really seen their actual rotations because you don't know if Kawhi is going to play this game or, or PG is going to play this game. And you just add more depth, but they already had a decent amount of depth. Is this just added on top? I don't know. They have so many players over there. They've got a lot of players. Who's playing? Who's not? I mean, it's good problems to have. Um, the least interesting trade at the deadline, Garrison Matthews or Bruno Fernando for Justin Holiday. Frank Kaminsky, two seconds. That was just a share of money. We look past it. Dar Char Dario Sharch in a second for Darius Baisley. I'm happy to see Darius Baisley get another home. It's just, mm, I don't love his fit there in Phoenix based on his skill set. And hopefully he pulls me wrong and he immediately becomes impactful for a team that's good, looking for good rotational pieces. But, uh, you know. It, it don't it don't it don't feel great that's a trait that we don't even have to talk about too much the knicks pull the trigger on josh hart and i read some things that they were in conversations for other people as well but the only one that they completed was reuniting josh hart and Jalen brunson you got the the wholesome moment of those two dudes together or i guess Jalen brunson finding out that josh hart was gonna come back or come to play with him since they were teammates in nova and it was a cool wholesome moment the trade ended up being um ryan archer diakono shvima kailu cam reddish a lot of protect the first round pick that's its own and turns into four seconds if it doesn't convey this season, which it, it won't convey this season. It just won't. The Knicks will make the playoffs. Uh, not, knock on wood. I don't want to jinx nobody, Knicks fans. I ain't, not, I ain't trying to jinx you, but they're good enough to make the playoffs. They've been good, and now Josh Hart's added to the depth. I don't think he's going to start. I mean, maybe he does, but he just adds another guy that plays defense, gets rebounded for a team that lacks defensive rebound, and especially with Mitchell Robinson going down. And for the price you pay, what's basically going to end up being four second-round picks and people that you didn't care about anyway, it's It's cool. Um, the Blazers do a be. We talked about this in our Blazer video, and I still got hate from it from Blazers fans when I was trying to point out the fact that it would be impossible for them to re-sign everybody that's on the roster. Um, and going to the, why would you go into the luxury tax for a team that's struggling to make the playoffs? So they made a couple moves around the edges, including trading Josh Hart because they didn't think they were going to be able to re-sign him, and they basically bought into the idea of re-signing Jeremy Grant come the offseason. Will he take the money? We shall see. Um, but this is a deal that they take a flyer on Cam Reddish and Cam, bro. This is, this, this is, I mean, for me, this might be the last stop you get, bro, as me being a believer in what you could potentially get. This is a team that desperately is looking for wing depth. They just traded one of their guys away. They're desperately looking for wing depth, Cam. So this is the prime place for you to showcase that you are a, not just an NBA hooper, but a, a quality NBA hooper, whether they be a bench rotational player, a starter in this league, whatever. Because people still think he might be the next Paul George, and it's been years at this point. You know what I'm saying? It's been years. Second trade that they ended up doing, talking about the Portland Trail Blazers, them receiving Matisse Stiebel. Um, I guess they, they did three trades because we already talked about the Gary Payton one earlier. Um, Matisse Stiebel was going to the Portland Trail Blazers. The 76ers get Jalen McDaniels, a couple second round picks. Sfi Makai Luke is now routed to the Charlotte Hornets. And the Hornets get a second round pick for Jalen McDaniels. Um, I was surprised to see Jalen McDaniels moved. I know there are rumors about it for some time, but I was just surprised. And, you know, they, they have a way of drafting players and they just sit around for three to four seasons and don't get a ton better. And then they get rid of them. Kind of the way Charlotte does it. Um, Matisse Stiebel moving on to the team, another team. 
and um, he just he's Gary Payton the replacement. Simple as that. He's gonna defend. Not gonna hit a lot of shots. He's gonna defend. He's gonna do a little something like that. Um, all defensive player, if you remember correctly. I'm I'm interested to see Matisse Thybulle playing alongside a Damian Lillard because I do believe that in the small amount of time that he was with Philly, where they used him as a role man, he was pretty damn good. And I wonder if they'll if Chauncey Billups will try to run a Dame. Um, uh, Matisse Stiebel pick and roll, um, but yeah, an interesting, uh, an, an interesting one for the Blazers. I will say that. I feel for y'all Blazers fans. This ain't this ain't the deadline you wanted. Um, at least, at least your t- team did something, even if it wasn't great. Um, I, we already mentioned the Thomas Bryant move. I really like that for the Denver Nuggets, and then the last leaves Moose getting traded to the Boston Celtics um, to replace uh, Luke Cornett's center minutes, and we love that. I mean, those are all of the trades that happen. There are two major, and I mean major, major losers of this deadline, in my opinion. The first one being Pat Riley. Um, sleep at the wheel. Sleep at the wheel. And, and listen, he don't got a lot of assets to work with. But but Pat Riley has been this dude that has been like a superstar um, in, the, in the eyes of a lot of us NBA fans because he always finds a way to get it done. He always finds a way. We got no assets. We still go end up winning this trade. Doing nothing at all when your roster looks like the way it does, it's bad, especially for an all-time great at that position. The biggest of all losers, because at least the Miami Heat are playing good basketball right now and they project to be a legitimate playoff team. And they're st- once healthy, they'll probably still be solid. So it's not that terrible. You still have Kyle Lowry on your roster, whatever. The biggest loser of all of trade that lined up. Goddamn Bulls. Zero trades done is about as unacceptable as any. If you told me zero trades was done last season at last deadline where we were the one seed at the deadline, then I ain't even mad at you. Brother, we the one seed. This team is very far away from that. This this team is very, very far away from that. I And, and listen, I, I've been... A, you know, very vocal on this channel about what I want and don't want as a Bulls fan. And what I wanted and most built Bulls fans wanted was something. We didn't know if we wanted to sell. We didn't know if we wanted to buy. But we wanted to know what the direction was of our organization. And one of the reasons why it, why it is so bad. And, and people don't realize this unless you in, ingrained in this Bulls bullshit. We, we ingrained in this bullshit. The reason why this is so very bad is because Vooch is a free agent. Ayo DeSumo is a free agent. Vontae Graham is a free agent. I think Derrick Jones Jr. is a free agent. Did I say Ayo Kobe White is a free agent? And and, and the Bulls, throughout the history of, of being owned by the Reinsdorf family, has went into the luxury tax one time. One time in the history of it all. You know, that and think about that they've been the owners for a very through the Jordan era, they were there through the D Rose era. We went through the luxury tax one singular time, ladies and gentlemen. So the fact that we didn't move some of these expiring deals just means that we're going to be okay with either losing Kobe White, losing Ayo Desumu, losing Javante Green, losing Derrick Jones Jr. So a combination is these these dudes in free agency for literal nothing, and we're just going to be worse. And being worse. It's not a terrible thing, but it's 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 terrible when you you don't even do anything to set yourself up to be worse. Us being worse right now is just because it's cheapness and not by design. If we started to be worse by design, I'm sure that 70% of Bulls fans would have accepted it. If we would have traded one of the big three, we would have accepted it because at least we know this is the direction of the organization. And instead, we keep talking about continuity on a team that has reached this peak a long time ago. Reached this, We just went into Brooklyn on a team that traded Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving the last 72 hours, and they smashed us. Ben Simmons looked great on against us. I know it was eight points, but you get what I'm saying. These are games that we're losing regularly. And you, oh, I couldn't wait, boy. I couldn't wait to hit a press conference. I ain't watched no press conference to none of the other 29 teams. I wanted to see what the Bulls front office had to say about them not doing a damn thing at the deadline. And what did he say? Well, well I think, I think we're doing, we're, we're playing a lot better. What team are you watching, my guy? We're playing a lot better compared to what? 
the, the year we got Derrick Rose, yeah. Yeah, we playing a lot better. Barely, because I think our lottery odds are the exact same right now. We not playing a lot better. Oh, we had a lot, a couple games slip through our hands. There's a difference between letting the game slip through your hands and blowing a 20-point lead five times before the trade deadline. There's a difference. I don't know how you can see the, the anemic offense and be like, ah, we'd be all right. Get that, get that ball to the Rose and let him shoot another mid-range can, contested and pray that it goes in. The offense is awful. A and Billy is benching. The young dudes, because he don't know what to do either. Are we supposed to be trying to comp Should I be letting Patrick Williams get all the burn because we're trying to develop him? Should we let the other dudes hoop if they playing better today? Because nobody knows what is going on. Yeah, we were in a... The, the worst thing he could have said, and this is Carney Shove, is that, yeah, we were on the phone all day, just nothing materialized. Brother, something materialized for 28 other teams. You saying you are the one of the two teams... That nothing materialized though. We ain't, we ain't throw four second round picks for somebody like everybody else. We didn't we didn't sell somebody at all. I'm so disappointed, and I'm counting down the days until the season is over, gang. Twenty seven more games, and yeah, they might go on a little run. Oh, they might end up in the play in. Boom, we might end up in the actual playoffs. That's fool's goal, man. We know that. We gonna go to the playoffs. Match up against the Boston Celtics if they make it out of the play-in. And we going to get swept. And that's that's it. And then the offseason going to come around. We're going to bring back Vooch. I'm curious about these Zach Levine rumors, if they're true or not. Because that changes the dynamic uh, the, the, di the dynamic of this offseason, potentially. But boy, oh boy, it's disappointing. And me, I'm diehard. I will be watching the last 27 games, undoubtedly. I'll be tuned in with a Bulls jersey on. I'm, I'm, I'm here for my squad. I'm going to rock with my squad. But god damn... We got no hope right now. Talking about we picked up the phone. We was in a lot of conversations, but nothing materialized. We've been playing better. I, just a, he, he tried, just threw a lot of buzzwords out. And shout out to Casey Johnson, who's um, a reporter slash journalist here in Chicago. He was not afraid to ask the real questions. Like, okay, what are we doing here? And there was no genuine answer. It was very political, beating around the bush stuff here in Chicago. We've already talked too long, but I, I I kept my Chicago talk to the end for the people that don't care about the Bulls. Let me know what you think about your favorite team um, in this trade line. And of course, as always, I will be in the comment section.